mm. you'd be out all day, every day. Everything was a, it was just normal. You got on the bus, if you was on your own, if your mates, if the bus was packed, you put a reach up. You got on the train, it's packed, empty with your mates, without, put a reach up. Outsides, reach, everything, you know, night times, walking tracks. It was just normal to take the, sh instead of walking the street home, like you would walk tracks. It was normal. It was really? there was so no, that's totally normalized. Totally normal. It was the weirdest thing. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the app store for free today. Instagram UK frontline. Yo, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, essentials you need to be, choose to be, want to be, on every day. All right, see? Put it all together, all in one for the intro. Yeah, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight, all the regulars. You know what you're doing, I don't need to mention it more than once. Television app, go get it. There's a bunch of stuff going on this year. Trust me, you need to get involved. Inside the house is a gentleman that, without question was one of the many names which I saw lurking about on certain journeys all across London um, in, in all city styly. The awesome, he's inside the place. How are you, my brother? I'm all right, mate. I'm all right. How's that for an intro? I mean, look, where do I be Where the <laughs> I hell do we it, begin? Man. Where do we begin? This graffiti game is very, uh, it's, it's very, um, it's got layers and peeling them back is quite hard. It's, it's, it's a personal thing for people, isn't it? It is, man. It is. There's a reason like why writers do graffiti. And I think if you actually break it down, no matter what walk of life they're from, there's a lot of similarities, you know, as for the reasons that they get into it. You know what I mean? So well, you think each person has that? There's a, there's a certain um, uh, creative DNA that... Is, is is within everybody that that does graph there's a certain thing that they all relate with yeah i think there's um a need to be noticed with writers you want to you want to put your name out there you don't mm. feel like you're getting the recognition maybe in your walk of life mm. you might be the black sheep of the family mm. you might not be able to express yourself at school the way that you want to uh could be anything it could be something that you've gone through in your life you know, that makes life difficult and you just want to escape. Mm. escape. It is escapism. escapism. It's, an alternate, it's an alter ego that you yeah. create for yourself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, man. I don't know, like, if, if I could just talk quickly about, you know, my early sort of memories of graph. Get in. Yeah, Here man. we go. Off to the races. What I tell you about <laughs> to go in on this one, Killer Killer Podcast. <laughs> He's talking. Let's go. Right. Yeah, so I grew up in Manor House, which is near sort of Finsbury Park, Haringey, uh, Stoke Newton sort of areas. And uh, there was a lot of graph around there. Mm. I don't need to say who, who, what sort of writers were around those areas. But calibre. Serious calibre, yeah. It was like a birthplace of a lot of shit. <laughs> and um, my dad used to work in factories in Tottenham ah. sort of area like and uh yeah there was a route that we used to go from Manor House to Tottenham and we always used to be stuck in traffic down this road we only had one car so we'd have to like drive my dad my dad would drive to work and then my mom would drive me and my sister to school yeah the way back on the way to driving my dad to work there was always traffic down this one road and it was towards Tottenham yeah. and uh on the wall there was like tags I must have been about seven or eight or nine something like that and my dad used to refer to his boss at work as the governor, right? The governor mm. said this, the governor said that, governor's a prick, you know, all this kind of stuff. <laughs> and I remember looking at the wall in traffic, I'm telling you, it's like eight, nine, seven, something like that. And it used to sit, someone put a governor tag on the wall and it was governor, governor, governor. And there was like, I think there was figs and uh, stacks reaches nearby. Oh, so how, long, how old would you been at this time again? 
about seven, eight or nine, probably seven or eight, I would say. So yeah, that was my earliest thing because he used to say governor and it was such a unique word. He was, he was the only one that really said it. And I saw it on the wall, G-U-V-N-A. Anyway, so this boss was one hell wrong. of a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this yeah. boss was up. <laughs> yeah, this boss was up. Yeah. And um, yeah, anyway, so that was my earliest memory. And also around Haringey, there was a lot of like, um, it was quite a Greek area, a Greek Cypriot area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it turned into like Turkish Cypriots and Turks. Mm. And then it turned into Kurdish uh, community, mm -hmm. a bit of a Kurdish community. And they used to have a like sort of group called the PKK. I don't know if you ever remember the graffiti that they used to do around Haringey. Wow, wow, wow. So that what date would that have been? Early nineties, I would Comment say. Comment below, guys. You know, yeah, early nineties. But early 90s. not that I have any sort of affiliation with these guys. <laughs> but um, uh, basically, I just used to read the writings on the wall. I was always drawn to it, and it just be you know where McDonald's is in Haringey. Yeah. I don't know if you know where that is. Yeah. It was a big wall just past the station, just before you turned, and they wrote in big red paint, PKK, da 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 da, da massive, like all the way down this wall. And I was reading out every letter. And my dad was talking to my mum in the front of the car, and he was like, "What the fuck is he reading?" Yeah. And my mum was like, "Don't know." looked out the window and he's like he's reading the writing on the wall do you think that's so, funny how people that aren't into graffiti don't actually observe things like that it always baffles me yeah. how do they not see the things that are yeah. fucking great that we see it's true but you know graffiti has always been people expressing themselves on walls you know the, the cave graffiti you know back in back in the day I've been to Egypt I've been in the tombs yeah. I've seen ancient Greek graffiti in the in the tombs really seen the Roman graffiti so yeah. you've really gone in on it you've yeah man it. I've analysed it all man you know I've seen like proper old school like early hundreds graffiti in the tombs in Egypt and it's pristine you know people felt a need to carve their name in stone and date it um, which is amazing it just stands the test those people are long long gone <laughs> you know? oh, it's amazing that, yeah 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 exactly and that is the point isn't it yeah because uh, you, that used to be the only point of reference that was to point things back to certain times of history and what was going on, and that still is the case now. That's it, yeah. But going back to what I was saying, yeah, sorry. it's it's literally not. It's, it's literally like the the that PKK graffiti. The reason why we as writers do our graffiti, we want to leave our mark, so that it, it's there, sort of like after we're gone as well. I, I feel that you know because I haven't done graph. I came out of it for eighteen years, and since coming back into it and the stuff, I've had new generation writers sending me pictures of stuff that I did years ago, mm. like twenty years ago, and I'm just like, man, I can't believe that's still there. And then yeah. also, my mate got to who passed away. Um, people peace. sending me pictures of his stuff that is on rooftops still, and that is that to me is the. Did he die from graffiti? No, nah, he got he got mixed up in. Other stuff. Other stuff, yeah, things he really should have. I might just add, don't try any of this at home, okay? This is not a spectator. This is a purely a spectator sport. Yeah. Do not try this at home. We're not, we don't condone it over here. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, just there's similarities, you know. There's Parsi and his graffiti still around me. You know, I might as you know, not being around for 18 years and seeing my stuff still around, people sending me stuff, you know, and then also going to places like Egypt and seeing this ancient graffiti. It's like even if you go mm. to Salisbury Cathedral, you see like uh, graffiti from like the 14, 1500s scratched into the walls of the church whoa, inside. Whoa. Seriously, man. But you know, those people, they're not remembered, but because their name is there, that's that's what I love about graffiti. Mm. And it's like it was like the same things that I saw you know, growing up. I don't know why, it just fascinated Let's me. Let's get right? a bit more into this this history referencing because um, you're probably the first writer, graffiti artist, has come on, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else, that has gone so deep into the scriptures and the history references mm. of medieval, archaic, Egyptian graffiti. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's, it's people leave their mark. People feel a need to leave their mark to show... Back in the day, it would, you know, like the cave paintings, I think they're in France, aren't they? Mm. Um, you know, Catacombs kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, you know, like uh, scenes of like hunting and yeah. things like that. And it's even like hieroglyphics and you actually see Egyptian hieroglyphics. Yes. It's trying to tell the future generations, you know, that find these tombs, what life was like for them, how they built the, the, the pyramids, you know, how they farmed, how whatever, you know. So it's like South America as well, got crazy... Um, uh, what's it called? Mayan, Mayan kind yeah. of scriptures and stuff mm -hmm. that, that, that tell the, the tales of time and. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And um, for me, that's really why I was drawn to graffiti. I mean, the first writer that I ever noticed is someone that never gets mentioned. Uh, I think he used to write another thing as well, which was his main tag. But the one that I spotted was because I used to cheat at school. 
Yeah, all the time. My mummy's like, stop cheating at school, stop cheating at mm, school. Mm. There's a writer called Cheat. Yeah, yeah. Do you I remember him? Of course, yeah. Is that Dude. Is that yeah. yeah, I've met him I once. I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, he, he was everywhere. Yeah. The Manor House has like four exits I to the station. I so well. <gasps> Bad, literally, C-H-E-A-N-A-T. Yeah, yeah. -E but had that lowercase like, vibe. The yeah. Lowercase, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Oh, wow. And analysing hand style, I love bombing. I love hand styles. I think it's just a quick, easy way to get off. And the more style mm. you can get in it within a certain amount of speed, mm. you know, is, is, is a beauty. It's a, mm. it's a real art form. It's really underappreciated by a lot of the, outs, the general public, mm. you know, but it's like, again, ancient graffiti, like writing back in the day, you know, when you see scriptures, it's really classy, the mm. calligraphy and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, with graffiti, we kind of use different utensils, you know, like our pens. We do use chisel tips, you know, like a mm. 15 mil pen, 30 mil pen. Uh, then we've got like the round nibs and stuff. Mm. It's what style you can get within it. But mm. anyway, going back to Cheat, he was the one you know, that never gets mentioned, but he just had a bad fucking hand style. And he was the one that I noticed, cheat, 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 everywhere. I don't know if he grew up around that area as well. Uh, mm. But then obviously you had others like Sub. Of course. Fucking, he's tagged with the S that went around like that and the U and the yeah. B. That, oh, you know, bro, like that, that was just the shit, honestly. That was like, my favourite, I've got to admit, that was my favourite era of graph in terms of t tagging and style. Mm. You know what I mean? They really came with it and it yeah, just man. looked so slick. And you know, like, and then there was just one dude around my era, which was Shu too, that just yeah. literally just, he was like an enigma. Like he had every bridge outside the station at Finsbury Park and it just looked like something that just weren't like anything else. Mm. And then you see his hand style and... My thing was when I was started writing, I'm probably best known for bombing mm. and my hand style, um, was I would try and copy everyone's hand style. And if I got to a writer's whose hand style I could not copy, that meant they had a sick hand style. Because if you can copy it, do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, because Shu Tzu has this mad, as I've so tried cool. it, I just can't fucking do it. He does this S like that, mm. and it comes up like that, and then it's choo, 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 and it's a big T that droops down yeah. like this. And then like, it's just fucking insane. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's just a bad hand style. But then nowadays you see like him doing these other hand styles, and they're even crazier. They're mm. completely different. But, mm. You know, it's just mad. Some like, people are just wired yeah. right in the right way differently. Yeah, cool. man. So you've got like trying to think of other hand styles that I, you know, teachers' hand styles pretty bad. Diets, D, mm. that comes up like that. Mm. You know, you, you can see what they're thinking in their hand style. It's speed. You know, if you're a bomber, mm. you, you're thinking about speed, but it's not just about putting your name up and as quickly as possible and, you know, with no style. It's, it's, it's about how much style you can put into that tag. You know, in a short space of time. Short space of time. You look at idea, and I, you, this is just my mentality. Oh, mate. You, this is my mentality. Yeah, he writes too. He writes yeah. idea and oh dear. Mm. Yeah, right. I has to go like this. Yeah, mm. da, 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 and the rest is the same. Yeah. But if he writes idea, which is a bad tag as mm. well, yeah, the O is rounded. It, mm. It's quicker. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? <sighs> but I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's what there I'm thinking. You go. Yeah. Bro, like he's the diff in my, right. This is just my opinion. Yeah. And I don't know whether it's because he's he's chosen that lane and that's what he's going to do to the max. Because mm. he's a bad boy, right, uh, you know, pizza too. Mm. I mean, some of the stuff that I've seen in the he's past. He's a bomber, man. He's a bomber and he's been perfected it. He just came out of like retirement, probably a bit like what I did. I don't know, it probably weren't as long as sort of I've been away. But it felt like it because he wasn't really around in my day when I was starting up. Mm. He literally battered it and he literally made everyone else kind of take note. Step up. Yeah. Step up the got fucked it was on crime watch uh, and again we don't condone this yeah mm. <laughs> but yeah we was riding the lines all day every day wow. you know and it was just like he just he was the one that just had every carriage man it was just relentless yeah i remember this it was fucking i was coming in at the tail end of that to be fair mm. my my world started and stuff but you were you were everywhere yeah man i used to get about like yeah, yeah i used to live like i my, got into graph sort of in finchley areas i grew up in like one end of the Northern Line, mm. which was the Barnet branch. I went to school, there was a lot of writers at my school, there was a lot of history of like uh, good quality writers, you mm. know. Um, Do you think that helps? A, a, does that help cultivate? Mate, it's, it spread like a disease from my school. It was the weirdest thing because you get kids, the mentality of school children is you go to school, you want to be like the bigger kids. If the bigger kids are into graph mm -hmm. and there's a whole year below them, mm -hmm. some of them are going to want to be like mm -hmm. that cool kid. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Just It probably still goes through my school today. Yeah. It's just mad. And there was just one dude in my in my area that was just absolutely 
batter in it at the time. I, I came into Graf at 98 and it was, you probably know what I'm going to say, is Zonk. Mm. You know, I, I, he just had that, cro- he just had that crossover appeal as well. You know, it's sort of like what 10 foot has today. Mm. Like 99, I remember that crossover between 99 and 2000. We used to copy, we used to try to copy his 99 under his tag and then we tried to copy his 2000 because it was so weird going from 99 mm. to 2000 because it was 98, 98, uh, 98, 99 and it went to 2000. You wouldn't write zero, zero, you had to do the four things and mm. he just made it look wicked it was like two and the zero just got a little bit bigger and he just had his hand style as well could never do his z and his k yeah. it was just fucking bad you know yeah yeah and, and z is like a it's an interesting one because you can be too thin mm. the, the cross lines and it's all just like bunched flattened mm. he like you say he he all those angles of the k with the z and mm. the end like these are these are different switchings of letters and he's just managed just he's always managed to space it out and look just like all men to be there, all dancing together. That's mad, isn't it? That's it, man. But there was a guy that I started writing who got me into writing who wrote... And basically, he was like scratch king on the northern lines. He had every window, etc. And he used to be... He was more advanced than all of us. And he came into school, he's like, oh, yeah, Song's done this new thing in Kilburn, some rooftop. I think it was in Kilburn. And he was like, come on, let's bunk off school and go and check it. And we was like, all right, then, fuck it. Let's just go and bunk off school. We bunked off school together. I got in trouble. I ended up getting suspended from school for that. <laughs> right, so let's get it straight. So you would bunk school for a whole day to go and see One Piece. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It was just when Zong did something, man, it just... he Perforated. To me... <laughs> Yeah, man, I think he had that, he definitely had that crossover appeal because there was a lot of riots in my school and the normal kids that didn't, not normal, but like the kids that weren't into graph, they, uh, you know, would never talk about anyone else's graph apart from Zonk. Zonk did something, mm. people spoke about mm. it. It was weird. I think it might have just been a rooftop because of positioning, mm. just the quality of the work. It was mm. always bang on. It was neat and tidy. And then it was just everywhere. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You just could not go anywhere without seeing his, his work. So As you grew up into it, did was this a s- slow increase of work rate? Or was it that you weren't... Because to think about Zonk back then, man, like, the he must have been out every night, every afternoon, every opportunity. Mm. Like, a lot of you guys in the 90s, mm-hmm. or late 90s, into the early noughties, the, the amount of turnaround you would have had to have done, did you ever forecast it being such... Because it was, must have been a lot. Mm. What, the work that we did? Yeah. Yeah, man, it was relentless. I've had people say to me, man, you're doing a lot of shit, da-da-da-da-da, you're, you know, going a bit crazy. <laughs> and I said, this is nothing compared to what it was like. Mm. You'd be out all day, every day. Everything was a... It was just normal. You got on the bus, if you was on your own, if your mates, if the bus was packed, you put a reach up. You got on a train, it's packed, empty with your mates, without, put a reach up. Outsides, reach, everything. You know, night times, walking tracks. It was just normal to take... The sh- instead of walking the street home like you would walk tracks it was normal it was really? there was so no- that's totally normalized totally normal it was the weirdest thing you know if you got chased normal you expected it you know if you was traveling the lines all day every day you never had a ticket you know it was just relentless it was all day every day that's the only way you can get up in london and to me graf is about entertainment i think mm. you're putting on a show you're kind of putting your name out Ooh, there it is okay. it, it is man all forms of hip-hop are forms of entertainment mm. what you do is a form of entertainment music great dance all that stuff and graf is an other form but it's it's it is a more it, it's been known to be something in you know it's a subculture sort of in the background you know you're not meant to know who does it mm. and so on and so on but times have evolved instagram has changed graph mm. like you say you're going to do a tag everyone wants your selfie everyone wants mm. a video everyone likes to see you do it it's like there's no there's no mystique in the world anymore mm. it's true but to meet writers back in the day i probably used to jump in there and say a story that's probably a good good jump off point you know back when i was writing if you wanted to meet legends mm. you had to be out there and it had to be literally just like one of them split moments that you was in the right place at the right time and you blew your mind because yeah you met them. and the <gasps> first first yeah. writer i ever met that was of any note real note yeah uh was i'm gonna mention one but he's not who I'm going to talk about. Another writer that gets forgotten is Cancer 143. Was it ca- Cancer 143. Oh, okay. I don't know if you remember him. Yeah. He used to hang around with range and crime, sort of archway ways. Oh, and all. Mm. I'll have to look up. Cancer 143, yeah. BTA. Okay. Um, yeah, he. I met him briefly. We, went, we never really did any graph together, but I just went out a couple of times with him. Um, but anyway, the first real writer I met went to meet Steez, the man Steez, with a writer called... Uh, 
And basically, he went and picked up a whole load of paint, went to Finchley Central. We're heading to Golders Green, and we're at the bus stop. And there's this dude standing there. We had, like, raw mail sacks full of paint. And I was helping take it home. Amazing. And this dude is just standing at the bus stop. It's night time. Mm. And um, he goes, oh, you boys right? And we're like, yeah, we're telling what we write. I was like, what do you write? And he goes, and I'm just like, oh my days! It's just literally <sighs> mental. Yeah, just keep on. T- I'll just pick them up later. Yeah. <laughs> so we get on the bus, and I'm up on the northern lines at the time, and uh, literally we're talking about graph, and literally like we end up getting the bus. Anyway, so we're chatting. I think he came to meet his bird. I haven't verified this story because it's been a long, long time. It's been about 20 years ago now. And um, yeah, he was meeting his girl and we ended up getting the bus all the way back to like our ends and we were just chatting graph the whole time. I mean, I'm like 14, 15 mm. and we're just talking graph the whole time. And yeah, it was just fucking mad. He gave me his number. Uh, he put me in. And yeah, man, I went back to school. I was like the man, do you know what I mean? You know, it was just fucking bad. And then he's, I don't know if you speak with i have walked many worked in many sort of lines of work written with a lot of writers i haven't met all the writers that i've wanted to meet no, he's one of my heroes man it'd be uh, amazing but uh, we'll, we'll have to see dude he's fucking amazing honestly uh, one, day. Got, mm, one day one day i mean there's so many writers and it goes without saying like i like to think as a fan first mm. representing on here uh i do my best mm-hmm. but it's not to everybody yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. For everybody. Yeah, I get that. I get that, man. But yeah, that was pretty cool. Like meeting meeting him and then going out on some missions. And you know, when you meet, you have to be like, for him to take note in me when I was that young, it meant a lot. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It really did. And I, imagine, yeah. I, I used to hang around with a lot of writers that were a lot older than me. Um, and it's the same as like footballers who play football, or even what you do in your craft. Mm. It's like if you hang around with people that are good, it's you become. Happen. You yeah. become better, yeah, and yeah. you know you improve. But what's you know, the most? What's the very quickly segue? What What's the thing that you learn early on the most that you'll never forget? Techniques. Techniques. It's just I don't know. It's Painting. Just bombing, man. I just yeah. loved bombing. I, every writer that I saw uh, write is just you get some writers that had a really cool hand style, but they were very slow at putting it up, mm. and then you just had some that just crazy quick and quality was there mm. it's just on point and just Born you know where amazing. to put your reach as well you know it's not just down you know down here on the side of the whatever you know mm. it's like there where everyone's gonna see mm. it you know quality you know there's a tag mm. out here mm. um as soon as you see it you're just like you, you could see a thousand tags around it my eyes getting drawn so that is totally. like in barnet there was a prime tag on an electricity box and gold and paint it's that yeah it's that just one quality reach you know he never really bombed mm. it during my time but that gold prime reach it was there for fucking ages mm. and it was just like firstly i didn't know who it was i wanted to read it mm. And then it's just the execution of it and then finding out who he is, seeing his old stuff around West London, and it's exactly the same, you know. And it's, it's, a, it's just a stamp. It's a mad pattern. It, and, yeah, that pattern being, you know, we we see one, we see the next, we see the next, and then already you've got the bug. One one thing that you've highlighted there, which I think holds very true, is in a in a world full of congestion and noise mm-hmm. and, and trying to um, uh, observe as much as you can yeah, graffiti can be a clusterfuck. And to the untrained, mm-hmm. you're just seeing squiggles. But then you see one, and it just does it. Mm-hmm. And then it unlocks all these other, ah, now I understand. Yeah. It's almost like an entry hole. That's it, yeah. And then you understand all the tags. It's mad, isn't it? Portal, yeah, man, mm. definitely. And, you know, you should always strive. I think in anything that you do, as soon as you stop striving to be better at your craft you're not interested in anyone. If you see it, if, keep going back to football. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I'm a Man United fan, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And the football quality has gone down. But back in the day, if you got to play for United, you played for United. If you weren't good enough, you were kicked out the door. You see the, the quality isn't there anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't know. I just think like with, for me with writing, I kind of reached a point and then kind of plateaued. It wasn't that it plateaued. It, was, it gets serious. I think between the ages of 14 and 18, you're like learning your craft mm. but it's how much you get caught in that period how much shit you get you know have you got a family that allows mm. you to graph as well mm-hmm. that's a big thing are they going to kick you out of your house you're going to be homeless you it's the journey think? of the sperm this thing you it know it is I mean? man it really is and it's like you know when you hit 18 19 that's when you get good and that's those are the crunch years if you're mm. going to be prolific like not like me like other people between 9, 18 and sort of 25 that's your crunch time and that's mm. where you really put you know the stamp down this is who i am 
you know. But what about the consequences? Because you say 18, 19. I would say in many examples that have been on a podcast or whatnot, I think 18 to maybe 26, 27, these are prime years. Yeah. Like a footballer would be, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but what are the consequences if you go that full all city? I mean, there is, there's a lot of psychological things that you carry mm -hmm. respectfully. You mm -hmm. know, some people don't. But, you know, they're... There are consequences, aren't there? I think there's different kinds of writers as well that don't want to be as prolific. They kind of improve the quality of their work and they go down, I'm going to do less, but way better quality, which is sick mm. because you're improving your craft still in your, in, your, in your own way. But if you're a bomber like what I was and, you know, like certain other people... You have to go, you have to be prepared to go to jail. Um, the whole time I was writing pretty much from, I got kicked out of school when I was about 15 and a half. So about six to seven, eight months before my GCSEs. And probably from the age of 16, I was pretty much homeless. So I used to stay at my nan's sometime back in Manor House. Uh, but I was like sofa surfing for like two, three years. It made life very hard mm. because you're thinking about food. You're thinking about where mm. you're going to sleep. Mm. It's a good way to get up yeah, being homeless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're completely off grid. Yeah, completely off grid. Um, but it, it's a hard way of life. And, you know, once you get to that age of like 18, 19, you start thinking, you know, meeting girls and so on. You start thinking like... You know, do I do the right thing? You know, settle down, get a job, this, that, and the other. Or do I do the right thing? Yeah, do I do what I want to do? And you know, like it's it, it, it nigh on nearly killed me, man. To 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 quit graft the way that I did. I ended up moving out of London for ten years, and uh, yeah, it really. Yeah, we're all was, speaking in retrospect right now. Yeah, right? I mean, it was it was tough. You know, it was really tough to give up something that you love, but you know, in hindsight, it, I would have stuck at it. I really would have, and. I would have been prepared to go to jail 100% for what I what I believed in. I mean, I was smashing yards. I was hitting trains, insides. Mm. I'm quite brazen because I play on, like, the confidence thing, you know, to mm. do stuff in front of people. Yeah, I've heard about this. You know, just to get up. And, yeah. you know, I'm not going to be in, your er in that area. I don't care if it's daytime or whatever. I'm not going to be on that train. I'm not going to be on that bus without putting a reach up because mm. it's a waste. Do you know what I mean? It's that's I'm a writer. So mm. I'm going to write on shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just get what I'm saying. So, but anyway, going back to what I'm saying is, yeah. If I, I think if you're going to go between that 18 to 25, 26, 27 period, you have to be willing to go to jail. You have to be willing to pay the consequences, the fines, the bullshit, all of that. But the writers that do go through that, they get you know put in history as legends you know they're remembered as legends and as writers that's what we all want graffiti is like it's actually a cool thing you know like you want to draw you want to write your name you know so much can come from that you know mm -hmm. they teach you in school you pick GCSEs and you know you can pick art but you draw shit you don't want to draw if you do something you want to do like for instance draw what you want to draw it can only go one way and that's you're going to become an artist mm. do you know what I mean and once mm. you're an artist it can go in you've seen so there's a lot of writers I won't mention them but mm. they've gone into other things yeah, 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 yeah. I'll mention one because he's quite open it's like panic yeah. you know what he's doing big up panic yeah big okay. up panic man and you know he's doing his own thing and uh, it's going well for him and he deserves it because he's put in the work yeah panic's one of those guys that definitely have made the transition into that more creative space of exhibition. Also, big up our bots, big up Ayn, big up yeah, Ayn as Teach, well. big up everybody mm -hmm. that, Teach. you know, and then the youngers that are coming through and starting that way as well. Because look, the, the, the hierarchy um, journey that you've got to go through as a writer, that's constantly changing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, regardless of what we're talking about here, there is a, a change of attention on a lot of things. And like you say, you learn so much and you just kind of want to actually... There has to be a return at some point. You've got to try and find your yeah. what your return is. Going back to what I was saying, like for me, stopping when I was like 18, 19, you know, it, it makes my day that people remember me. Honestly, it really does. It means a lot. And it's the best time of my life was writing. It was the best time. I had total freedom, no mm. responsibilities. You know, the credit you get for, uh, you know, the chases and all that kind of stuff is amazing. But it, going back to what we were saying about going between that 18 and 25 period, willing to take all that shit from the police, you know, getting arrested, prison, so on and so on, family, whatever, mm. you know, making certain sacrifices as well. You know, you have some people that go down the route of work, they save up for things, you know. Mm. That's your work, in my opinion. And if you've done, if you've paid, if you've paid your dues, man, you should be allowed to earn a living from it. Mm. And I'm happy 
that I see certain people mm. making a living from it because I wouldn't want to see them doing something that they hate when they've mm. put in, you know, that's your years for experience. Yeah. Is between the ages of 18 and really 30, that's where you apply, learn your trade and then you apply your trade after it from mm. experience. And, you know, you see a lot of people that, you know, back in the day wouldn't have had that opportunity, but now you do get that opportunity. Mm. It's still hard. It's, it's, still hard. it's a different hustle. It is, man. It's very hard. But anyway, good luck to anyone that has paid their dues and is earning money from this game because they deserve it. Yeah, they do. More than some. Um, what is it about Graf that makes a young person... Oh, you said something, you know, earlier, you'd go out and tag, you'd go out and walk tracks, you'd go and do anything at that time and it was just it just became the norm. But what makes that pride? What makes that... Because you're not just putting up a tag for you. Of course you are, but mm -hmm. it's actually the movement of things. It's like to say you are a graph writer, particularly in the inner cities, that's like a real thing, isn't it? Yeah. And, and still is, curiously, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Definitely, man. For me, it was it was my home life that made me want to write because definitely 100% on the black sheep of the family. <laughs> 100%. I know a lot of writers are the black sheep of the family. Um, the pixelation don't do them justice. <laughs> you know I mean? It really, it really is a pit. The being the black sheep of the family, I tell you, I've gone from one end of the spectrum to the other and within my family, I'm still the black sheep of the family. Really? So, really? Yeah, man. And it's like, you know, some, sometimes you just don't, click with their ethos you know there and it's i got nothing against you know what they You've got do, brothers obviously. and sisters yeah i got a sister yeah what do they think when they hear that i mean you know life threatening this is the this is the public's question i think and i often think it i'm like yo like how do your parents let you get away with it how does that happen hmm. how does how does this become trivialized to them how what do your family think of it uh, my family hated it, hundred percent. They absolutely hated it to the point where they wouldn't let me have a house key. Uh, my paint was stashed all around the local area in bushes, in <laughs> fucking on the side of tracks. <laughs> you know, um, you know, I, I used to have to try and get as much paint off my hands as possible. <laughs> For me, graph wise, I would have been a hundred times more prolific if my parents weren't the way that they were. I know it sounds harsh, but they were right to be like that. Because your kid, yeah. you know, when you're a little kid, 13, 14, 15 or whatever, you know, out on train train mm, tracks, mm. you know, breaking into yards, what these bolt cutters, you yeah. know, all that kind of stuff. You know, you get it. But, you know, once you reach a certain age, you go, do you know what? This guy is dedicated to his craft. He's going to do it. Just like if someone is going to take certain drugs, if someone's going to, you know, mm. pursue music instead of mm. going and down the other route, you know, the yeah. normal or, you know, other sort of like traditional educational yeah. routes, you know, and you just have to support them. Do you know what I mean? To a certain mm. extent, you still don't like it, but you support, you know, but yeah, they did, they made it very difficult for me, you know, to kind of, and it's, mm. it's kind of like, you know, tough, isn't it? It is tough, man. Because if you've got kids yourself. You know what? Here's the other thing as well. The, the word graffiti, we oh, won't get into any wanky deep debate here. Graffiti is an action. Hmm. That would be right in definition as far as the creative process of what you do. It's, it's the whole thing, like the art of getting to a position doing the thing at the position, the speed, like you said, the mm. recovery, how do you get the fuck out? Or better still, you've got time and you want to do like a really fucking top to bottom on a wall or on a... Mm. Do you know I mean? There's just so many variables, so many levels, and all of it consists of, well, did I rack this paint? Oh, I wish I'd bought this paint. Mm. Or how do I get over there? Or I know how to get there, I just don't know whether I've got the time. It's just so many things that you, it's really hard to... I'm talking illegally and legally here. It's really hard to kind of pin it down as like what the art form, the main element of the art form is. Mm. It's to get your name up. It's all it is, isn't it? That's all it is, man. Do you want to be that noticed? Kind of breaks down everything. It, I was no, to five sorry, minutes. sorry. <laughs> graffiti is about one thing. It's yeah. about being known for your name. That's yeah. it. And for the the beauty, you probably have it with what you do. You're, I don't know your real name, but I know you as Killer Keller. But when you shut that door 
and you're behind closed doors, you're living your home life, you're who you are. That's the real you. Right? Mm. You have this alter ego and that's what that's what your writing name is. And as soon as you go out that door, you're Oh that. man, someone else. And someone else. No one at my work knows what I'm doing. And if they knew, they wouldn't fucking believe it. It's such Really? A, yeah, man, it's such a contrast. You can kind of be more open with what you do. Um because Yeah, yeah me, I can't. I, I cannot be open with what I do. I try and tell certain people that are kind of like you know I could kind of trust I used to write I used to do it but they don't get it they don't get it man they don't get, they don't get it. it and it's like you know it's, that's fine but it's hard to live like that do you know what I mean and it's for, anyway for me I just if I'm going to go and have this if I'm going to have this alter ego it's like me getting back into it recently mm. my name is Tease I want you to know it mm. that's it bam 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 I want to put it up as much as I can can I just go back to what you just said there about shutting the door um because, like, when you're... Uh, I don't think I've ever experienced it. I can imagine it happens, though, particularly with Graf. Um, people have uh, come down of something. Or maybe not. I guess it's the mindset. It depends who it is. But when you shut that door, as you, and from a hard day's work or a hard day's night or whatever you, whatever you did <laughs> back in the day, you understand? Um... Is there a come down of guilt, uh, stress, uh, vulnerability? Is there a feeling of, that wasn't really me, or it was me, but oh, I feel a bit bad about it. Or is there anything like that? No. So you never, ever felt in any way under threat, worried, about, paranoid? Yeah, paranoia, yeah, 100%, man. Yeah, that you're going to get nicked or you've upset certain people, whatever. Um, that 100%, yeah, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of negatives within graffiti, illegal graffiti anyway, 100% there is. But it's an addiction. And you can't explain it. It's like heroin. For me, it's like doing what I do it is kind of like it's a release. You don't, it's like to keep it under control for 18 years and f to come back into it at this stage in my life it's so fucking weird because when you grow with it, it's a gradual progression. But when you come out of it and go back into it as an adult, you feel it taking over your life. You feel you're not doing your work as you should be. You're not doing what you normally do at home. Your mindset when you're on that train traveling to wherever you're going, you're looking out the window thinking, I'm doing that, not rather than, oh, that's a nice piece. Do you know what I mean? Just mm. because you have an interesting graph. You're, you're, you're a fan mm. when you're not writing. And nothing gets in your way. Nothing. nothing. It's just you have these weird skills that no one else is taught as a writer. I know how to get to that train. I know how to write on that train. I know how to, you know, cut that fence. I know how to how to get away from the police. You know, I know how to get my name up quickly. I know how to cause mayhem. I am a writer, you know, at the end of the day, you know. You just you just it's it's so weird. It's the it's the oddest feeling. You have these skills that you forgot you had. And they're only relatable to graph unless you can translate it into something else. The bomber's mentality of more, 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 more. If you can translate that into another, I don't know, way, way of thinking, like your work, I don't mm. know, whatever, you're training into something mm. or you're trying to learn something, mm. that energy that you, you have as a bomber will make you succeed in anything that you do. And I find that's the beautiful thing about graffiti. Is like, yeah, you can transfer, it's transferable M mindsets isn't it that's the only transferable skill with graffiti for me it's the mindset the determination the drive you just keep going the writer is the weirdest person on the planet because they will put in thousands and thousands of hours for no financial gain mm. they will lose sleep oh, that makes them dangerous makes them in what way well there's no other reward there's nothing else there's another equivocal and maybe two because uh, the only ones that we know on this fucking podcast is, uh, you know, beatboxing and skateboarding. Mm -hmm. Like, people do it habitually. Mm -hmm. um, they'll do it to their throat break. So they do it to their knees break. They'll do it till they get caught and then they're charged. Mm -hmm. And then that... It's the, it's the, I feel like graffiti is the last bastion of, of, of free speech mm. and, and creative... Uh, for, yeah, it's creative freedom, man. And I... I only say that from a someone just looking at it from what it for what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. It's a, it's a free spirit sort of mentality. It's usually for no financial gain, and 
the amount of hours you have to put in is just unreal. But it, you do it because you love it. And people take it, it so like this is like you say you learn so much and you put to put so many you get out what you put in. But even that in the term of graph and what is what you're getting out because mm-hmm. it isn't anything that is a, a pliable in the physical. It's a mental, isn't it? Yeah, man. Yeah. It, it oh. makes you feel good. You know, as we get older, when you're a kid, mm-hmm. yeah, you don't have certain, you know problems as a child but as you get older like one thing I've noticed with a lot of the writers that you've had on your podcast is a lot of depression that runs through writers and I've suffered from depression um and I've known a lot of people that have suffered from depression and other things and um you in order to stop being to get yourself out of that depression usually if you do something that you really enjoy you know some people get into running lifting weights drawing playing a musical instrument Mm doing what you do Fishing, anything right, yeah. but for some people it's graph and it's just you know it, it cures depression for some people i noticed right? that i noticed that i mean listen man like over 100 i mean 300 plus podcasts and probably about half of them are graph yeah. there's a correlation between the the arts and music and fashion and everything and I, there certainly is a correlation of um ptsd ocd depression all these things graph is it's in abundance and the conver- like you say the conversations on the podcast alone are warrant of a you know a, a, of a case study yeah man 100 percent. and you know these these guys if you can go the one be- beautiful thing about graffiti is most writers start young and if they if if teachers at school can kind of jump on it and go do you know what this because at my school i think they started they, they created a music studio with decks and like yeah. oh, microphones cool. and stuff that was just after i left mm. man if that was around and I'm, I'm crap at mc mm. and the dj and i wish i did that <laughs> as well but yeah. it was useless that but um yeah um just do something for graph as well do you know what i mean that's what i'm thinking like, like they get rid of all these hall of fames and shit and it's like well mm. you know there's places for people to go clubbing there's places for studios for people to and i yeah i mean mm. skate parks i remember when i was young it's like to get a skate park funded was impossible mm-hmm. like why is it so hard for the arts to be sub- subsidized when they that's don't true. you know what i mean it's true man you know back in the day you used to have youth clubs in churches and then they all went because they kind of became a bit lame, didn't they? Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. they never really got replaced by certain things. But now they've brought in all these amazing skate parks yeah. and stuff, and kids go there, and they're, it's keeping them fit. Yeah. Keeping fit cures depression. Yeah, yeah. Skating, there you go. skating is a form of exercise, isn't it? Yeah. So, and one thing about graph is like you go to a wall and you, it's a puzzle. Mm-hmm. You've got just a huge, huge puzzle that you've got to try and figure out. Mm-hmm. That. Yeah, you say it's depression releasing. That's it, man. Not everyone can skate. Do you know what I mean? And some people are better at drawing or more interested in it. Like, I'm useless at skating. Put me on a skateboard, I'll deck in two (laughs) seconds and smack my head off the floor. I've done it twice and it happened twice. (laughs) And that's enough. (laughs) That's enough for me. So I'd rather like paint a train or something. Uh, But yeah, seriously, it is for for some people, they prefer to be artistic in that way. And, you know, that's their thing. And, Mm. you know, if you channel it in the right way at a young age, they're only going to progress quicker quicker and then maybe take it down a, a work route mm. or something i don't know do you, you think know? there's a, per- a public perception of graph writers because i think and i've said this before on podcasts you know people like to watch the line they don't mm. necessarily want to be with the line because mm. i think what people perceptions of a, of a graph writer harks back to more i don't know sinister times which fair enough he still exists now mm-hmm. but i think the perception of a writer makes it quite hard for people to understand them I mean, things like this help but mm-hmm. there is a perception isn't there well, of writers, yeah, definitely, man. Um, yeah, back in the day, like, there was a lot of agginess and stuff like that, and I'm guessing there still is today. Mm. It just happens, you know, so with anything, really, even at school, you kind of get, you know, trouble between whatever, mm. the different groups and stuff. Um, but, yeah, you know, you you do kind of grow out of it and you change, you know, and mm. other people change as well. And some people, you know, coming back into graffiti, I've seen heard from people that I knew, used to know and they've had hard times, do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's sad, you know, then you hear from other people that have had amazing stories to tell, you mm. know, it's life's life, do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, you know, go back to your question. Sorry, man, what was the main point of your question? I think, I think the main point that I'm coming to is, like, people change and people evolve and then you've got to, you've got to ask yourself at the end of it, did it, did it change my life? Has it, does it, is it me? Is that d- definably me? And without it, am I a worse person? Has graffiti changed my life in a positive? 
50-50, I would say. 50-50, yeah. I mean, some things you'll never know the answer to, no matter, because it never happened, so you never went down that road. Um, but, yeah, I definitely made mistakes back in the day, 100%, you know. Um, Any regrets? Uh, yeah, regrets, man. There's always regrets in life. I'm, I'm telling, if you're the type of person that doesn't have regrets, you're not living, in my you're opinion. Not yeah. You're not learning. Yeah, yeah, life is all about trying, making mistakes, learning from it and moving on. And sometimes you make the wrong mistake and you pay a heavy price that will change you in a certain way. But then sometimes you're lucky and you can kind of take a step back and you're not going, you know what, this is tough, you know, but I need to learn from it. And you, it's, it, while you're learning, it's tough. And, you know, you come out the other side and you come out a better person and you try and teach others not to make the same mistakes that you made. I think that's mm. definitely something that I've done in my life is, I mean, after I left Graph, I suffered from depression probably for about five years, big time. Yeah. And then kind of found a way to channel that energy that I had through graffiti. Yeah. And as I became good at my craft um people would start saying the sort of things to me like what writers used to say in terms of giving you kudos for being up or this that and the other mm. and you kind of got a, it's not the same but a slight little buzz like that and you know when you get kids coming up to you and you know saying you know i want to learn how to do this i want to learn how to do that and you show them little things and stuff like that, and you get that little bit of satisfaction from it mm. do you know what i mean so bigger than a light button that eh? <laughs> that is um that is what life's about is you learn from your mistakes man I, I i i can't understand why some people would just you know like you know they never take that plunge to take that risk in whatever they do and if it goes wrong who gives a shit do you know mm. what i mean you're young yeah that's what you got you, you don't want to be making that mistake when you were 15 16 17 18 when you're 35 36 mm. 37 so make it while you're young it. yeah but they you teach know, you that all the time you learn from your mistakes that's what life is about yeah. it's, it all, it's all it's about you you probably we all make mistakes yeah. everyone makes mistakes there's things you look back on in life and you go do you know what? i wish i never fucking did that and you know at the time it hurts that you made that mistake big time and you have to live with that mistake for a long time mm. but eventually if you learn from it and you sort of move on in your own head the time will come where you'll get to show people you know the, the new version of yourself do you get what i'm saying so and some people will still love mm. to hate because they can't forgive and so on and so on which is fine and as the person that might have done wrong to that person you have to accept that some people can't forgive some people, a lot of people can, man. They yeah. really can. People are very forgiving. Yeah, I'm going to just move very briefly into another subject because just going back to the way the world is and people that go through depression and suffer and graffiti is the, 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 the remedy. They don't necessarily have had to been into graffiti as a kid. It's just this thing now is it helps them through something. There's an argument in it that, you know, places like Old Street, Shoreditch, Brick Lane, you know, these are destination spots. These are places where that are on the, you know, holiday resort spots of hot mm. places to go when you're in town. Um, and there's a there's a tourist, there's a commodity there. There's there's things that, you know, that have been paved the way by the likes of Elk and Ein and, you know, Banksy and, you know, Robbo and, you mm -hmm. know, these, 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 these history spots... It brings in a lot of money, and I'm, I'm guessing it, it costs a lot for graft to be removed and shit. But then there's other areas. I don't know. It's so contradictory because you also they there's it's also a tourist thing as well. It's it's Old Street wouldn't be what Old Street is if it wasn't for that artistic history. I've never been to Old Street since it's changed um, mm. in graft terms. Okay. <laughs> it's mad. <laughs> I know yeah, people I'll... keep telling me you just walk out, the, you know, down the street yeah. and it's just graft everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Shoreditch and Hoxton. All yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. Which is cool. And I, yeah, it's it's wicked. But for me, it's definitely. I love the legal side of graft, and I'm I'm practicing my craft now. I want to get to a certain level where I'm competent at doing a fucking amazing piece yeah. it's gonna take a while because i'm yeah. just starting out now really um but for me the you know graffiti only has that buzz if the authorities want to fit want to stop it. it for me that's what it's about yeah. it's just that being against the system but that's what this podcast is about because you know the cosine of of street art quote unquote is pretty much the reputation that was before it mm -hmm. do you know what I mean like you can't street art isn't risky they can't, you can't, you can't have street art without that hardcore site. It doesn't hold weight. Mm 
Mm-hmm. I think it's two different things, man. I, I really do, and I, I I love both sides. I genuinely do. Um, I want to be good at the street art side now, and I'm older because mm. I, I've got a kid now, and I want to be able to show him. I was having this conversation with someone the other day, and when I talk to non-writers about graph, and they go, oh, have you got any pictures? And I go, yeah, 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 look, this is me fucking up this station. This is me fucking up that train. <laughs> All in hindsight, of course. <laughs> Thank you. So, yeah. And then it's like, you know, and then you, you might pass through someone else's piece, and they go, oh, that's nice. You're like, oh, I didn't do that one. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But now I want to start having those things in my collection, because I've got the skills. Mm-hmm. just need to practice it, but it takes time. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's why I like the street art side but then I also love if you're a bomber you're a bomber man you just can't shake it it's just mad to think that you were, you were underage when you were graffiting before mm. you know what I mean then all of your 20s into your 30s mm-hmm. and you've come back 18 years later mm-hmm. what a transformation of graffiti landscape you're mm-hmm. in. Yeah, man. You have to learn like new can techniques and stuff because of the pressures and the, the yes. caps. And the... <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. Fucking caps. When I started, I think Montana was the only paint yeah, brand yeah, out yeah. and then Belton just came out. Belton was the shit. Yeah. Came back on the scene. I went down to a graph park somewhere and there was a writer there called Acros. Oh yeah, hold tight. Yeah, he's he's fucking. He's a bad man. Big up. Yeah, yeah, big up, man. He's fucking awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. And um, he was going on about this new paint loop, and I was like, all right, okay, Mm -hmm. knows me with all my belt and stuff. And belt and his shit now compared to that paint. It's it's just the amount of caps, certain caps that work on certain things. You know, I go there generally with like fat caps, and now you've got all these skinny caps and stuff, and you can get better. But then you think about how did writers do it back in the day? You know, with the caps that they had, like in the early nineties. I think that was more creative. I used to. When I think about that and people tell me the stories about these, I'd say, yeah, sign me up. That sounds amazing. Like mm. making colours that way or yeah. stealing certain caps to make that sort mm. of... T- yes, yeah, man, that's, a t- you, that's like, that's like a, a plumber with a toolkit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, certain skills, man. You know, I heard stories about paper writers mixing colours together to make certain colours, yeah. you know, caps of like certain tins, you know, that would fit certain tins. Amazing. Amazing. But now you've just got so much and I think it really is too much. I think you just, you guys, you see like the loop paint and you see the colours next to each other on the rack and they're so similar. You know, whereas back in the day you had plastic coat decoratives, you had... You used to think about your shit. You had to think about it, Yeah, you only had like eight or nine, ten colours in decoratives, man. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the rare ones are like pomegranate and I think there was one called mint. They were proper rare, hard to get. I've heard that. I've heard that a couple of times. Yeah, before. Hunter Green and Daffodil Yellow, I think it was. They were pretty bad. Uh, and then to outline, you had to have Underbody Seal. That was that was the main one. Or Wax Oil or Stone Chip. You know, anything else was fucking hard to write with. I fucking you know? love that you remember the names. Oh, I love it, man. You know, <laughs> all these years I ain't been writing, I go into Halfords to get something from a car or something like yeah. that, yeah. I always have to walk down. It's, an, it's like a fucking magnet. Mm. I, I don't, I'm not interested in the paint or anything, yeah. And I just go, I find my Myself down that aisle with the underbody seal, and I'm looking yeah. at it, I was like, shit, man, there's six tins. <laughs> you know, in London, in London, yeah, they were always you were lucky to see one. They yeah. might have put a few out, yeah, and they're always down that aisle with the with the door with the, the glass you couldn't see through. And if they were there, you didn't give a shit. You you had to yeah. have them because they were so hard to get because writers used to be on it. Uh, but they were usually always empty. It was never any underbody seal, man. But now, even now, I walk into when I wasn't writing, walk into Halfords, straight down that aisle without even thinking, look on the bottom shelf of underbody so shit there's six tins there Fuck. and then you're like I don't write anymore you know what that reminds me of you know only fools and horses when they win the, the land for, you know they sell the timepiece and they go back yeah. to the old flat and he picks up the phone as if like he's still in business yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that it's that it's that so that, habitual yes that's exactly what it was like <laughs> you walked down that aisle. I'm sorry we're, out of, we're not we're not trading anymore yeah exactly you're shit. not a writer anymore man yeah. let it go you know just yeah. get your windscreen wiper and walk out the shop yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or your litre of oil but yeah. I tell you, man, like, I think a lot of people, this will resonate. And I think more importantly, there's a lot of young people that watch the show. You know, big up, big up all the heads that watch, especially out of town, out of country, um, that, that really will pick up some knowledge on this one episode. And I think also, bro, like, I've got to give it to you for being honest. You know, no you, worries, you really man. have dropped some science today. Thank you, man. You know what I'm saying? Any shout outs? Anyone you want to shout out? Shout outs, definitely Rust, man. Rust <laughs> is, uh, you know, someone that just has not changed since the day I met him. He's he's yeah, always, he really helped me out big time back in the day. Big up Ticker as well. I've known him a long time. Mm. And 
Yeah, yeah, he's been through some stuff as well, but he's just it's the safest guy, honestly. Mm. Bigger, bigger him up all day Lovely long. Lovely bloke, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and One all thousand. the old heads, all the all the all the writers that you know got me into graph that I've mentioned throughout this podcast, all the DDS writers, hundred percent. You know, they were mm. my idols growing up. And yeah, big up got to um, mm. rest in peace, um, asset as well. Rest, rest in, in peace, peace big asset, up panic, yeah. acros. Yeah. Um, oh, God, so many people, man, to mention, man. Mm. But yeah, whoever the knows me, on. man, the pressure's on. Anyone that, um, yeah, I've crossed paths with, pass with, mm. big you all up, man. Tease in the house, there you go. For those of you who don't know, now you know, all right? <laughs> and I think the big moral of the story is to stay safe out there, whatever it is you're getting up to, do you know what I mean? Just uh, be safe, don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't, and stay lucky, all right? Thank you, Tease. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Nice one, man. Be safe, people. Peace. <laughs>